Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video about the First Amendment. And recently, Roman Scharf has been copywriting, copy striking, copy claiming videos on YouTube. And Paul Forp, uh, the Paul individual, has definitely, you know, maybe in the UK, I've been told that the UK there are different laws on the First Amendment, freedom of speech. And maybe he's trying to implement the UK laws that would apply to him on us American citizens, which would be uh, very bad for him to even consider, right? So why we have, so first of all, I've said this a million times, but I'm going to say this again. I have gone to law school and I've graduated and become a lawyer. And I had one of the best professors I've ever had, probably the best, now that I'm thinking about it was a professor called Professor Von Ostein. He is very famous for his works on the First Amendment and which is freedom of speech. The First Amendment is protection against the government, okay? It does not protect you against a employer, which would be a private entity. So let's say that you work for McDonald's and you say some really racist stuff. McDonald's has every right to lay you off. Now, let's say that Paul believes the FBI in both his live stream with Frank, which he put Frank in a very precarious position, intentionally, in my opinion. I have dealt with Frank for um, over a year now, probably over almost two years, and I would never put him on live stream for his own safety. Frank may not appreciate me saying that, but he is very talkative. Uh, we have between all, us in a very short period of time over 100 emails exchanged and they're not very friendly or fun emails to be exchanging with this individual to be quite honest with you. So would I put him, this volatile individual on a live stream for multiple hours? No, because it is highly likely that he would reveal something the FBI told him not to say. And that's Paul, right? So Paul is trying to say, oh, the FBI is going to come after you. These YouTube channels like Crime Peace, myself, maybe Noel, right? That is ludicrous. That is exactly what the First Amendment is trying to prevent you from doing. Um, let's, let's be frank here. They're protecting Anthony. It is very clear that there are multiple gray, gray watch market dealers who have dealt, done business, who there's many photos with Anthony, right? Um, and they are protecting him. In fact, in this video, they're actually, Anthony is mentioning how often he talks to Roman. He talks to him every single day. Interesting, right? And when Paul says there are no signs we could have possibly picked up on, the Reddit post right above that was like him and Anthony in a podcast admitting to just running away from the police and going to jail and all his uh, crazy background. I, the fact that he's like using it as, oh, you know, a pity or empathy is kind of ridiculous when you're in an industry which is 100% trust based. So, the gray market, they're using the first, I mean, they're, they're, the idea of that video, which is now deleted, was that the FBI somehow would talk to you for making a video, or talk to me for making a video about Anthony. That is exactly what the First Amendment would protect you from, okay? So the FBI is a government entity. It is paid by the government. The people get paid by us, the taxpayers. You cannot have the FBI investigating, throwing people in jail for what they're saying, right? Do you understand why this is so important? Now, you can be sued in court, in civil court, right? But you, you cannot be put in jail, and you cannot be unmaliciously prosecuted and so on. I think this type of uh, statement from Paul really shows how desperate the gray watch market is in protecting Anthony. I've made a conspiracy about maybe the gray watch market needs people like Anthony. I've only been in it for a while. And there's always been, you know, the wizard and the Anthony and then the guy who, you know, jumped. Um... And that guy had $10 million. So there's always been these characters that are these bad people, right? But but the Watts dealers, they never cross a Watts dealer. And the, the running thing that Roman would say, he's never done bad business with a dealer. 
So if you're not doing bad business with a dealer, who are you doing bad business with? Probably customers, right? Clients, consignees, I imagine, are probably not too pleased about your behavior. And I think that's the um, that's the the real realization that I'm having about the gray watch market is they're okay with screwing the customer as long as they get paid, they got like a digital watch vault, which I can talk about later. There's a lot of uh, shady activity going on. And a lot of this is just not, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense other than you're trying to make money from the customer. So this is a very, it's a very balance, right? You want to, blank the customer over, right? You want to F them over, but you need a fall guy to take the responsibility should something go wrong. And obviously, eventually, the Ponzi scheme is found out because people want their watches back. Like, this could have continued. If the watch market was high, like, people don't understand, Bernie Madoff was able to continue his scam for such a long time because the markets were hot, right? Or at least good, growing. Only the collapse, the other collapse, exposed his positions because those people who had all this, quote, fake money and the Bernie Madoff scam didn't want to take money out because they had bills to pay. They had, just like what's happening in the watch market. Like if you could, if, let's say 100 consignees give Anthony one watch and the watch market goes up. They're not too worried about it. They think it's going to be taken. Anthony can continue the Ponzi scheme for a very long time by paying, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? And no one think about this. What happened when the market downturns is everyone runs to the bank. Everyone runs to Anthony and says, hey, you know, I, I need my consignment money out. Oh, you, it didn't sell. Okay, give me my watch back. Too many people wanted their watch back. And then the whole thing, the whole house of cards fell. And the reason Anthony was so was so adamant and so smug about like the operation still being able to do it because he had done it pay before. Like it got to the three million dollar level, not overnight, guys. He slowly built that level of debt. Right? And even the five million dollar level, right? I mean, like you have to understand, like this level of debt was not achieved in a day. It wasn't achieved in a week. And I would even imagine not achieved in a month or even multiple months. This was a scheme that lasted for at least, I think, probably six months, if not more, based on the evidence I have. And in all reality, it was a scheme that really did benefit the gray watch market because the money went somewhere. The watches went somewhere. And the money went somewhere. And as Roman said, he never did a bad deal with a dealer. The dealers love him. When he's walking in, like the only people... You don't see no customers. No customers want to be on film with him. No consignees want to be on film with him. The only people who want to be on film film with him is like Fabian, right? <laughs> the watchmaker. He's probably thinking this is a great deal and this is great news. And um, and actual watch dealer. When, when he walks into the watch dealer, they're all smiles, my dude. How can that be, right? The dude ripped off so many customers. How can the watch dealer, the great market watch dealer, be all smile? They're smiling. They're happy. They let him film. Like, think about the different reactions that a customer has to Anthony versus a watch dealer, right? A customer does not want to be filmed, doesn't want to be voiced, doesn't want anything to do with the guy, right? They just want to buy the watch and get the F out. Uh, and then... Um, Look at the reaction of how people treat him in the gray watch. Oh, man, Anthony, do you want a colored drink? What, what color do you want your drink to be? Let me know. It's night and day of what you, it would be normally. And I think a lot of this uh, interaction and a lot of what Anthony was able to do was he made very good in the dealers. I, I go back to the blackout 1.0. He made sure Roman Scharf got paid. He made sure he got paid before he left. He didn't give a damn about the consignees. He didn't call all of them. And he didn't give a damn about his customers, right? You know, they're trying, hey, maybe they took a day off. I mean, supposedly these customers are going to visit him from like Malaysia or like all around, right? Well, you're just randomly shut down for a week. What if somebody booked a plane ticket to meet you? You didn't give a damn about your fans, give a damn about your customers, right? And you give a damn about your consignees. But the one person you cared about was Roman Scharf. You made sure that dude got paid out the day before you left, right? 
and then it's, it's no mystery to why Roman decided to, um, yeah, so possibility is right. There's so many videos of them being friends and them, you know, being, doing business. I mean, it was, it was, um, and with Paul, like, I mean, there's videos of him, him hugging in there. I mean, I, I don't even know. He's, he made a video like he was Jesus, man. He's, I mean, honestly, God, he made a video saying the second coming of the timepiece gentleman, which is, again, been, I don't even know how Paul's channel operates. He just makes, like, crazy videos, and then he deletes them. I, like, I don't watch his channel. I don't think there's, like, all that much um, interesting stuff to watch from the channel. But, um, man, what what does he do? But the, the content I have watched, right, um is just him deleting videos about sending the FBI. And and that's the that's the problem with people abusing the first amendment and stuff like that. You like my my professor has always said this is there are always people, organizations, groups of individuals who want to limit freedom of speech. They don't want they don't like the way you say it, they don't like the way what you're saying. They don't like this stuff because it gives you power, right? It gives these citizens us power, ordinary people the power to speak out. When something is not right and the power to avoid the government punishing us from this we don't live in dictatorship we don't live in north korea i guess we don't live in the uk i don't know what the uk is exactly like but we live in an environment where we are free to speak and anyone who threatens that freedom of speech should be shut down immediately especially on youtube so that's my 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 response to paul and roman and their um, tactics, if you will, their copyright claims and their uh, defamation claims. And, and you know, it, it doesn't make sense to me why they're doing this um, other than they might be scared. But all this is going to do is uh, kick the hornet's nest, in my opinion, um, and make an even bigger mess in the future. So anyway, that is it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.